In this video, we're going to learn about the Cylindrify tool. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about the Cylindrify tool for forms. Now, the first thing you want to do is go into the description of the video, and you want to download the data set that you see on the screen. If you don't want to, you can also go ahead and just make your own. This is created using an 8x8x8 cube or a box, and then I simply created a bridge between it that is going off at a slight angle, and it is rectangular in nature. Now, the Cylindrify tool is something that has come about as a need for post-processing generative designs. Now, generative is something I cover in courses for clients, but I haven't really done anything on this channel for it. Part of the reason is because there is a cost you have to buy in to solve the simulation studies. So every time you do a generative design study, you have to pay 35 cloud credits, which roughly equates to about $35 in most places in the world. So we're not going to be talking about generative design. That's something I can cover in the future if, if there's interest in it. But I wanted to talk about these form tools, specifically Cylindrify. But I did want to mention that Cylindrify is typically used for post-processing those types of designs. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to understand what we have here. Now, this is something that is very prismatic in nature. I Again, I used a box with a high level of subdivisions, and then I created a bridge between it. So I know that this tube running through the center is not a cylinder. It is simply just a rectangular extrusion. So if we go to Modify and we go to Cylindrify, notice that there aren't really any options here. We have Selecting Faces, and then we have this Auto Feature Selection. If we deselect that, really what happens is if you select a cylinder that is close to a true cylinder, so for example, if you had a generative design, it would be able to identify some of those features as cylindrical in nature. And if I hit cancel here and we go into edit form real quick and take a look at our selection options, you'll notice that there's also this feature selection, this strut hole feature. Now, if I select a face on here, you'll notice that it doesn't actually include anything until I select that. Now, even though some of these tools, these selection options are, are sort of hidden inside of edit form, the shortcut keys, for example, Alt and H, do work if you can remember those and you use them often. So for example, I can hit Alt and H on the keyboard and it'll select that entire thing. Probably one of the more useful ones is the Grow Shrink, which is just the Shift key and either the Up or Down arrow, Up to Grow and Down to Shrink. Then you'll notice things like the loop is Alt and P, Alt and L to select loops and rings. So for example, if I try to grab something here and I select Alt and P, it'll grab that entire edge there. If I select Alt and R, it'll try to do a ring. It just depends on your selection. Now this geometry is not the best for this, but if I select Alt and R here, you can see that it doesn't do anything, but if I do Alt and P, it goes all the way around. So again, these can be helpful, but it does take a lot to remember these shortcut keys. So coming into edit form is usually where I use them the most because I don't honestly remember all of these shortcut keys and I'll need to go in and with the exception of shift up and down, that one's pretty easy to remember. If you use like alt and up, you can see that it's actually moving around. Um, control and up doesn't do anything, but alt and up and down actually allows you to move around, move that selection around, and then shift allows you to grow or shrink that selection. So um, it can be pretty handy to, to be able to remember those, and sometimes it's good just to play around and check those keys out. But that's not really the point of this video. The point of this video is to talk about the Cylindrify tool. So let's select Cylindrify, and again, if you're on a PC, you can use Alt and H, and um, if you're on a Mac, then you'll use whatever the respective key is. But one thing that we're going to instantly note is that now we have a cylinder. So if I say OK and I use Undo and Redo, you can see how drastically that was able to change that. So very easily, it is able to take something like this and we can you know, go ahead and we can turn it into a true cylinder. Where I think that this would be an amazing tool is if we were able to select edges and turn those into cylinders. So for example, if I went into modify and cylindrify and I wanted to you know, potentially turn this entire thing into a cylinder, 
it would be extremely helpful if we were able to do that. And again, those shortcut keys would allow us to um, grab loops by using Alt and P on the keyboard. And you can see that it does work here if we have a lip, but it doesn't work if that lip was completely gone. Um, so if, if I were to get rid of that entire lip, if I come over here and um, I try to select around here, you'll notice that if I delete this, I no longer have those faces. So if I come in and I try to use Cylindrify here, I don't have a face to select. I can't use the edges, and it really isn't going to work very well by selecting these faces. So what it's trying to do is it's trying to take all of these, and it's trying to really turn it into a true cylinder. And uh, again, if you don't have an entire face that you can select in order to make this work, then the result is going to be pretty messy. Um, so you can see that it, it did give us some sort of form of cylinder, but it's not quite as clean as the other side. Now, both of them are not perfect geometry by any means, but you do at least have the option to potentially do like an extruded edge there. And you can kind of work out how that's going to transition into a cylinder. But again, really the main intent of this is for something like this extrusion or this bridge in the center. And again, the main reason that this tool exists, I believe, is that when you post-process a generative design outcome, a lot of those features are very organic in nature. And turning them into a more of a true cylinder is extremely helpful both for manufacturing and for aesthetics. So that is a quick look at the Cylindrify tool and potentially some different ways that we can apply it and use it. Remember that the main reason is for these sort of features in the center. And again, Alt and H on the keyboard, if you're on a PC, will let you select those. Um, and you, we can apply it to the outside edge like we did here. Uh, that, that was able to work and it's okay, it's not great. Probably with some more subdivisions here, we could make it work. And it did work over here, um, but again, it's it's not really ideal geometry. That's not really what we want to see. But we can still work with it. We can still scale it down in plane, and we can keep it um, cylindrical in nature, and then we can continue to work with it. But again, look, it's not perfect. It's, uh, it's not a great option. We can flatten it. We can do some other things. But you're going to end up spending a lot of time trying to get that to work out. Whereas um, if you just simply do an extrusion, it's a little bit easier. And if you just use the tool for what it was meant for, for um, those sort of bridges, pipes, or those features through the center, that's really where it shines and where it works best. But there's not, a, there's not always a single answer. Sometimes there are different ways that we can do things. And, and this tool can be helpful as long as you have a scenario that it really shines. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.